there's a lot you can do in this town You set it up and turn it around We might have come from somewhere else But this is where we found ourselves Welcome to the local show People you work with, people you Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. Thank you for joining us, guys, in the new year, our second show of the year. So excited to queue up a friend of mine. Hasn't been on The Local Show for a while, but he's one of our A-list guests, guys. Welcoming back pro skier Chris Davenport. Welcome to the show, Devil we'll do Air Elbow yeah. from a distance Boom. here. Nice to see you, Eric. Air Thanks. Fisties. <laughs> Thanks so, for having me back. It's been a while, as you said. Uh, um, it's an honor to be back. And thank I'm you. spending a lot more time in Aspen this winter than I ever have. So yeah. um, it's, it's, it's nice to come in here and, and chat about all the stuff that's going on. Yeah. Wow. Well, I appreciate you. I also appreciate the, not to be too corny or cliche, but the silver linings like having Someone like you around, like having John Oates around last summer. Yeah. We had a special one-hour show with four songs he played. Oh, that's so great. That not, would not have normally happened. Yep. But due to COVID, we're obviously living a lot different life. And let's start with that. It's a natural thing to talk about. Yeah. And that has caused you to be around more often. You're not traveling on your own or with your clients that you guide around the world. And yep. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I mean, you mentioned silver linings, and that's the biggest one for me is that, yeah, I've spent the last 25 years sort of on the road, whether it was com competing or filming or guiding or, you know, just doing trips. And um, the one I loved all of that. It's fantastic. Um, but, the you know, the carbon footprint's high. Yeah. I'm away from my family. Right. And, and, and just, you know, away from this beautiful Roaring Fork Valley. Yeah. And the, the one thing that I've really taken away in this last nine or ten months since COVID is I love this valley so much. I've had so many new adventures this summer and fall, um, <laughs> ski touring here in the spring, spending more time in the community. Uh, it's just sort of reinforced my, my passion for this place. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's also caused me to kind of pivot in what I'm doing since I, I can't be traveling like normally right now i'd be in japan and since i can't do that i'm i've, I've got to work and make some money so i've been actually working up on aspen mountain and highlands through the ski school skiing with clients and i've had great people and it's more guiding and and, and kind of coaching than teaching because they're all generally good skiers right but uh also getting out in the backcountry a little bit with aspen expeditions nice um you know the conditions out there haven't been great so i haven't been doing a lot of that i'm cer certainly waiting for that to improve yeah um but i don't miss these big trips. I don't miss packing <laughs> and leaving for three weeks. Right, um, right. And uh, it's been so nice having all, all, we're empty nesters now. All three of our kids are, are gone. Wow. But uh, they've all been home since like Thanksgiving, which has been awesome. We've been skiing, they've been skiing, <laughs> working a bit, training with ABSC. And so there's so much to be grateful for and, ha yeah. and thankful for, even during this ridiculously tumultuous, crazy time, yeah. I, can, I feel like I can flip that switch off and just be happy for what we have here yeah. and the, the locals that we get to surround ourselves with and all these activities. And uh, so I'm grateful. <laughs> it's all good. It's kind of like we fall in love with Aspen again. I mean, I, I, yeah. I've never traveled that much. But I think we gain an appreciation for our home, for our valley, for our family. Yeah, yeah, you know, all these kind of It's a simplification, too. We don't need to be, you know, maybe as scattered and so complicated and running around and, and it's stressful. Yep. So I think there's, there's a beauty to living more there's simply yep. closer to home. Yeah, I don't think I ever took this place for granted. But as you just said, I did find a new appreciation for adventures in our own backyard, whether it yeah. was on the bikes this summer <laughs> or hiking new trails that I'd never hiked before. Wow. Uh, my wife and I this fall when all, you know, all the kids were gone, we weren't working. We literally had like e all day, every day to just go do whatever. <laughs> so we're like, what have we not climbed right. and hiked? And uh, that was awesome. And so, yeah, um, it's, and now that it's ski season, of course, you know, we're all busy, but uh, still every day I'm up there, I'm just like, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. And it's awesome. You can still be, a, you know, work for Ski Co. and share what you love. Yeah. Aspen Expeditions in the backcountry. So you can still manifest, you yes. know, your yeah. work and the work you love and guiding and sharing. And, and for me as a guide, I mean, I just, I, you know, it's awesome to go do these things on my own or with my friends. But when I get to share it with someone and yeah. see them light up, Absolutely. that's magic, that, right? That's what it's all about. I mean, I've always yeah. been a big fan of giving back. Uh, yeah. whether it's to the community or to the sport. Um, I didn't have as much time to do that in my younger years of my career. 
but now, um, you know, whether it's working with clients, as you just said, or um, I'm the board president of AVSC now, so, you know, raising money and helping um, the club stay on its feet during this incredibly challenging time is a, is a huge honor. I mean, it's a big, it's a big commitment, but um, I wouldn't have been able to take that role in my in a normal year because I would have been traveling all over. It would have been like irresponsible. Right. But uh, you know, this year it's it's to help our incredible team at AVSC steer the ship through these stormy waters has been uh, awesome, and I've learned a ton. And um, you know, it's amazing during this pandemic we have 2,400 kids. All our programs are operating, and we're full steam ahead. It's so amazing. That's great. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like like you say, full steam ahead. Yeah. Um, I'd rather say see you like say turning <laughs> yeah. the ship. It's a little more, but well, anyway, it also reminds me of a Norwegian adventures when you talk about ships and stuff like that. Oh yeah. But we have so much to get to, Dad. We're gonna take a quick break. Okay. Rehydrate. We got some video coming up. We got so much to get to. I do want to thank my winter underwriters for making the series happen. With great shows like Chris Davenport here. We want to thank Klug Properties, White River Overland. Pickin County Landfill, and last but not least, Sundog Athletics. We'll go to our only break of the show, guys. We'll be back in less than two minutes. We have two-time former World Pro Extreme Skier champion, Chris Davenport. I think I hacked that, but we'll just say <laughs> two-time World Free Skiing cha uh, champion, Chris Davenport. He's very well accomplished, has been doing ski mountaineering all over the world, including Mount Everest, which we'll talk about, so don't go away. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. White River Overland specializes in camper van upfitting and overland outfitting. Catering to mountain dwellers and outdoor enthusiasts, Many of WRO's builds are purpose-driven to facilitate and enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. Nestled in the White River National Forest, close to the deserts of western Colorado and Utah, WRO also rents camper vans and accessories. More at whiteriveroverland.com. Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience one-of-a-kind guided adventures and gain new skills to experience the thrills of snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, mountain and road biking, fitness hiking, and Aspen's exclusive fat biking and canoeing adventures. Like Sundog Athletics on Facebook for more or explore sundogathletics.com. Welcome to We're back here on the local show. Thanks for sticking with us here, guys. Each week where we feature inspirational locals in our 17th year. I want to thank uh, great guests like Chris Davenport, who's joined us in the past. Dav is back with the faces <laughs> of Dav, we're calling it. And uh, we want to talk about, um, you know, this, uh, this uh, zest for adventure and discovery and exploring and yeah. going around the world. But let's just talk about maybe a couple of the things that you really appreciate. Like for me, as I get older now, now soon to be pushing 60. It's kind of hard to mm -hmm. imagine, but more of the aesthetics for me versus when I was younger it was more about charging and running up my heart rate and, you know, competing and which is still fun to do. Yeah. But more about like take time for the beauty, mm -hmm. hug a tree. You know, I'm getting maybe I'm turning into the hippie. I always thought I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I did grow up in the 60s. But, um, you know, talk about some of those things that are the most appealing to you with all this adventure around the world. Yeah, I, I mean, you touched on a good point. I'm, I'm a, a big lover of beauty. You know, I just think that the, the natural world has so much to, to offer us. Um, and if we open our eyes and our ears and our senses to everything around us, you can go out into the mountains or the desert or uh, on the ocean 
and just kind of plug in and, yeah. and just soak up all that energy yeah. um, or, or share it. Um, so, you know, like you said, for in my 20s, I was all about hucking big cliffs, competitions, <laughs> film segments. And while it was fun and exciting, it was a dangerous time. And I feel very fortunate to be alive right now. I was in a lot of, uh, I was in a few big avalanches. Yeah, I took some big falls in, in you know, skiing. And uh, um, I feel like I kind of ran the gauntlet of my 20s in, <laughs> and 30s, perhaps even, and then made it into my 40s and went, whoa. I'm still here. Amazing. Like, okay, I'm going to make sure that we continue this. So I've, wow. I've definitely become a lot more conservative yeah. in my approach to um, sports, even though I'm out there as much as I've ever been and as fit, maybe not as I've ever been, but like right up there. I rode 10,000 kilometers this summer, which is 6,600 <laughs> miles. <laughs> On the bike. Yeah. Good for you, so man. That was, so that was pretty good. That's awesome. Um, well, for me, it was like, if I can't work, I'm working out. 100%. <laughs> like, I'm working out that much that was more, my, right? Yeah, exactly. That's it. So, yeah, I, I just, I love every day being outside and, and, you know, sharing the experiences with clients, sharing passion, sharing knowledge, um, improving myself. I'm, I'm definitely of the mindset of, kind of always be learning, like yeah. always be a perpetual student. We never know yes. enough. Yes. You know, you might be the smartest physicist in the world, but you're still curious to learn about physics. You might be, you know, experienced skier like myself, but you're still curious about learning what else you're capable of. Yeah. So that whole discovery of like human performance as it, as it um, pertains to each and every one of us, um, I love just digging deeper into that well that we have inside of us and, and figuring out what's there. Right. Especially as you said, we're getting older, you know, you're, I just turned 50. Uh, last week, five zero man. Welcome I feel, to the five zero club. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm thirty five. Um, right. Body's good, mind is good. Like you know, but um, attitude is, is attitude is, in the is 30s. attitude's generally good until I read some news and then I get pissed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, you know, life's good. And, and again, like I just seek out the beauty out there. And you right. know, every time you get off the gondola and look out at the elk range, or every time you stand on top of Highlands Bowl, or you walk up above the Cirque and Snowmass and you look out at our backyard, yeah. how can you not go, wow, exactly. look at this place. I do it every single time. It's amazing too, because I mean, for me now, 38 years in, I'll go to the top of the bowl, or I'll go even up Richmond Ridge and take some people snowshoeing. I am still in awe. Yeah. I mean, I still look around and I'm like, and I'm kind of like surprised, like, I'm still in awe. Like, I mean, yeah. after all these years, but it's that beautiful. It's yeah. that awesome. It's that spectacular. Or what my dad would have said, God's country. Son, you're so fortunate sure. and you're blessed to live in God's country. I said, yeah, well, we grew up in not a bad place in Wisconsin, Dad. We're actually the old style commercial was filmed. Yep. That said God's country. <laughs> <laughs> old style beer. Yeah, old style beer. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. But, um, we've uh, Again, name of the show is Faces of Dav, and we've got a, a great video clip. Cool. It's going to talk more about your adventuring, exploring, mountaineering and being a powder hound. So let's check that out next. The heli left and the storm was there. It's almost like your survival instinct kicks in. Just listening to the wind howl is just incessant. You have to have patience. And if you're comfortable just being patient and not worrying, you're going to get the goods. When it does go blue, you're like, all right, game on. All right, Griffin, in 10 seconds. Wow, that's so good! Oh Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Boats and skiing go really well together. Stein told us that there was going to be some rough seas ahead. Literally off the zodiac onto the couloir wall, sustained 40 degrees all the way to the summit. It's 10 o'clock at night, and it's so awesome. Just to be in a place that's so wild is pretty cool feeling. We've only touched the tip of the iceberg at this point. I think for everyone in the group, it was kind of why they came here. This is one of the most incredible views I've ever seen in my whole life. That's why we came up here. This is so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> most of the United States doesn't have much snow right now. And in fact, most of Canada doesn't. But up here, they do. We 
got the call from CMH, then it was game on. It's only natural to start looking for what's next. And they call it the Centennials. It was going to be risky. It's the 100 tallest mountains in the state. That's a full rope length. Another summit. 13,800, 13,200, 13,900. This is what it's all about, people. We talked about some of these aspects, Dav, like uh, the adventurer, the explorer, yeah. the mountaineer, the powder hound. Um, I guess let's break them down, you know, each one of them. Just kind of summarize what you love most about being an adventurer. Yeah, there's so many things. It's, it's um, so many things that get me stoked about what I do. That's why this series was called The Faces of Dav. It was like all these different hats that I wear in the industry, <laughs> you know, whether it's being, being a guide and taking people out there or uh, setting goals for myself with projects like climbing the 14ers or, you know, tr uh, traveling to unskied destinations in the world, things like that. Um, you know, the engineer is another segment that, that was all about me designing and developing boots with Scarpa and skis with Kessley and clothing with Spider and, you know, kind of getting your hands dirty when it comes to trying to make the best gear for our sport. Um, and then there's there's like, well, it's not in the series, but the nonprofit side of things. I mean, I'm my sort of three pillars of charitable work are avalanche education and safety, um, uh, raising money for for kids to be involved with skiing, like with AVSC. And um, finally, very importantly, climate change through my work with Protect Our Winters. Right. So those things are, are as much a part of who I am in my career as the skiing itself. I really um, love that giving back. And ultimately, like, it, at the end of the day or the end of my career, who cares about winning world championships or X Games medals or films? That stuff doesn't matter. I don't keep those trophies on the, wall, on the, you know, on the cupboard or whatever. Um, <laughs> what matters is, like, if you made a difference, if you helped yeah. make the sport better or the world a better place or your right. community a better place. So that's the most important thing to me. And it's fun when you're young to, like, win and yeah. be competing and be, like, on top of the world but it, yeah. as you get older you realize that those things are not as important so but how that affects someone else how that inspires someone else this you is know, true. in the moment of yeah. course who doesn't want to be like you know yeah, yeah. I mean, for me winning a race like back in the day especially a bike race is nothing better because the other thing is you know how much work went into that yeah and then you finally get this reward and it's almost like an explosion of joy of and, and you're purposeful like mm -hmm. you're fulfilling your purpose so there's also you know a lot more greater meaning around that but I think those accomplishments in terms of inspiring others. Let's go to just to the basic of being a powder hound. Cause okay. like, what is it about powder that yeah. we go like so <laughs> mental for? Like we're like, Ugh. we would risk our lives literally to go for this stuff. You know, we used to think there was another kind of white powder that was the most addictive in the world. Yeah. Aspen was kind of known for that in the 80s, by the way. Yeah, I'm aware. Um, <laughs> but what is it? It's so addictive. Like, what do we love so much about yeah. powder? In, in, in fact, in your own words, You know, I, you it's um, some of the most beautiful and incredible things in life are the most difficult to describe. Yeah, yeah. And, and powder skiing is, is one of them. Um, <laughs> I was skiing up in Canada one year. This is like a decade ago with a Swiss guide at CMH, a, a classic old guy, Rudy. And uh, he said, Chris, skiing powder is like peeing in your pants. <laughs> Everyone can see that you're doing it, but only you know what it feels like. <laughs> I love that. I love it. And, uh, it's kind of a warm feeling. Yeah, exactly. Inside. You know, when, you're, when, when that soft, dry, cold snow is hitting you in the waist and in the chest, uh. and you're choking on it. And, and gravity is pulling you down or pushing you down the mountain um, and you're in control. Maybe you're in the forest or maybe you're uh, up in the Alpine. It's, it's just like an incredible high yeah. that, uh, again, I, I don't think there are, I mean, poets and authors and skiers for decades have been trying to put words to it. And I'm not sure anyone has ever really done it justice. Um, it's a very similar feeling to, to catching a wave on a surfboard yes. where Mother Nature is yes. the driving force. And we're just giving little inputs here and there to kind of play with that force. Um, as I was saying earlier in the show, I would typically be in Japan right now, which <laughs> is the 
um, the mecca of powder skiing. It Japan. just, yeah, yeah, it does not stop snowing. It's wow. cold, it's dry. Um, and the beach forests are, there's some, something really like energized about them and, and beautiful. And, uh, um, I miss that feeling a lot. You know, it's, um, well, yeah, once you get it, it's addictive. There's a feeling, that feeling of flotation, you know, and for me, I have a theory. Let's hear it. Back in the womb. Yeah, when sure. We were floating around like, woohoo, all we had sure. to do was float around, get nutrition, take a nap, do it again. Yeah. We're all just getting back to that floating feeling of bliss. Yeah. That's just a theory. We'd have to go really, really deep. Um, but we have so much other things to get to because I did tease Mount Everest. And yeah. Not only skied Everest, you shared that with a client. I did, yeah. And we had talked about that on, in a past episode. Yeah. But can you just kind of capsulize that Mount Everest experience? Um, I can, yeah. It's uh, certainly right up there on the on the podium of, of my great mountain experiences, if I could put it that way. No doubt. Um, for all of the sort of negative uh, media or press that Mount Everest might get for accidents and crowds or trash, a lot of that is kind of unfounded. Um, we had an incredible experience there. Our experience was one of good teamwork, good planning, uh, solid weather. Um, Neil Beidelman and I having an opportunity to ski the Lotsey face, which is just like only been done, I don't know, six or seven times. Which what a great partner that is. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> talk about like, and it, at the bottom of that thing, when we were done, we, we hugged <laughs> each other and just like looked each other in the eyes like, what did we just do? Oh my gosh. I mean, it must <laughs> you know, just... you'll take that one to your grave for the rest of your life. Like that's a powerful, powerful oh. experience. And then on summit day with our client Effie, uh, on a gorgeous, gorgeous day, bluebird, full moon, Amazing. climbing throughout the night, wow. and then the, the sun beginning to come up over the, the Tibetan plateau, the eastern sky at 4.30 in the morning, lightning, and then you know by 6.30, we're over the Hillary step and on our way to the summit. Mm. It, it was a, a surreal, as surreal an experience as I've had in the mountains, and it was perfect. And our timing was right. Um, we spent 45 minutes on top, enjoying it taking pictures just like wow. you know just tripping on the whole experience of altitude and taking off the oxygen mask and then realizing you're getting really cold because you don't have oxygen for the metabolic process that was a crazy experience <laughs> but it's so nice out it probably yeah, you to be yeah. like, oh we're just up at the top of the mountain like it's oh yeah it was i mean i had my the bowl. i had my gloves off i was taking video and unreal. just kind of it was unreal that and must be part of the surreal aspect was it's so nice there was here. no wind at all like none wow. so that made it really comfortable because it was probably like 10 below zero out wow. but because there was no wind it was quite comfortable awesome. and um and it was funny, before we left Aspen, my wife, Jessie, said, Chris, whatever you do, do not call me from the summit. Because, you know, that's halfway there. The summit's not the goal. Oh, Getting get back down. down is the goal. Right. So I wanted to get on the sat phone and be like, I'm on the freaking summit. <laughs> but, uh, but we didn't. We didn't. I, I called her when we got back to base camp the next day and was like, yeah, wow. we're down. We did it. It was amazing. And she was, wow. you know, it, so it was, it was a really cool experience. And, and I, I love all mountains. I mean, standing on top of the Maroon Bells is equally uh, as an, an awesome experience. So um, there's something cool about summits too. Unbelievable. Yeah, we're touching on all these things, powder skiing, climbing mountains. Oh, that's what uh, we're here for today. Yeah, you know, I, I, I get the same feeling when I first run, go up the gondola and do a top to bottom down Spar Gulch in the morning and you get a uh, perfect groomer. You get to the bottom, you're just like, wow. Like what a, what a start to the day. Which is really interesting too in that you don't need to be up on Mount Everest no. to have that feeling. You Absolutely know, There's something not. about a, a base feeling of skiing. Mm -hmm. You know, the freedom, the being outside, the speed. Talk, Klaus yeah. likes to talk about zero Gs, you know, and getting in the air and feeling that feeling of yes. zero Gs and speed. And I mean, again, Klaus was skiing, I could call it his age speed. Yeah, right. Skiing like... 80s into his 80s, you know, 80 something miles an hour. That's but incredible. All those sensations, right? It's kind of the cumulative yeah. sum total of that, right? Yep, yep. I absolutely love that concept. Um, the sensations of, of what we do, whether it's on a bicycle or on a cliff face or in powder. Um, yeah, again, I just, I'm at a loss of words. It's just awesome. Two quick tips before we finish the show, Dev. How can pe a couple of big tips in, or main tips in terms of people going after their dreams in life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and pursuing their passion? Well, you know, I'm a big believer that um, there's sort of four key attributes to successful people in life. Um, and, I'll, and I'll share them. And this isn't something that I made up, but um, 
if you have these four things, you can do anything, anything. The first is passion, right? You and I are sitting here talking about all this stuff that we love, powder skiing and whatnot. It doesn't have to be a sport. It could be a, an academic subject or a hobby, but you gotta have passion in your life, yeah. right? If, you, if you're not passionate about something, you're like on the hamster wheel and you, know, you gotta maybe stop and pivot and reset. Um, the second thing is vision. And that's, that's what you do with your passion. Like, where, where do you take it? Like, I love skiing so much as a kid and an adult. And then I had this vision of, like, I could be a pro skier, so I'm going to work towards that. Um, so that's the... That's the game plan. That's the game plan. It's like, yeah, having a plan with your passion. And then the third thing is perseverance, which is, like, you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get hurt. Things aren't going to go your way. There's going to be a global pandemic or a crazy man in the White House or whatever. It's going to just get messed up. <laughs> or all the above. Or all the above. <laughs> you got to persevere and, and have grit and, and be tough. And then the final one is teamwork. Man, surround yourself with great people. Yes. Because none of us succeed on our own, yes. whether it's the coaches that I had or the trainers or my equipment uh, manufacturers or family, all the friends that I've skied around here with, like your partners. That, those those uh, t people that make up your team yeah. will take you to incredible places. So those like four things are how you're going to hit the proverbial home runs of life. Buddy, I baked cookies. Did you have fun on the show today? <laughs> I had a great time. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe that, that went it? that fast. Is that it? Jeez. That's it, buddy. Wow. Homemade cookies? No way. Organic chocolate chunk and coconut. COVID cookies? Baked just hours ago. Awesome. Well, they're totally sick, but not that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you have fun on the show today, Dan? I did. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, it's awesome. Air elbows, Boom. buddy. Air fists. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Chris Davenport. Yeah. Thanks for all you do for our community. And thank you guys for watching The Local Show. I'm so passionate about this community. I absolutely love living here and raising my family here. It gives me a lot of pride to share this with my friends and my clients and help them achieve their, their dreams of owning an Aspen Snowmass and enjoying this incredible lifestyle. White River Overland specializes in camper van upfitting and overland outfitting. Catering to mountain dwellers and outdoor enthusiasts, Many of WRO's builds are purpose-driven to facilitate and enhance skiing, cycling, camping, climbing, and river adventures. Nestled in the White River National Forest, close to the deserts of western Colorado and Utah, WRO also rents camper vans and accessories. More at whiteriveroverland.com. Sundog Athletics Aspen's Adventure Sports School is your opportunity to experience one-of-a-kind guided adventures and gain new skills to experience the thrills of snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, mountain and road biking, fitness hiking, and Aspen's exclusive fat biking and canoeing adventures. Like Sundog Athletics on Facebook for more or explore sundogathletics.com. Welcome to...